What distinguishes an optimist from a pessimist? Belief in the best, of course. Fans of the epic fantasy saga Dragon Age also for the last 10 years sincerely hoped that BioWare Studio took into account all the shortcomings of Dragon Age. Inquisition and the legendary role-playing series will have a triumphant revival. Dragon Age The Veil Guard is a direct sequel to the tragic story of the ancient elven mage Solace, which began in Dragon Age, Inquisition. The player will have to cooperate with the dwarf Varric, known from the previous games of the series, to prevent the ancient god's crazy plans to destroy the Veil, separating the world of humans from the realm of demons. From the first minutes of the game, you can see the improved graphics. The developers have done a great job, having managed to squeeze the maximum out of Frostbite Engine, providing previously unattainable for the games of the series, level of drawing and detail of the game world. However, behind the unprecedented beauty of ancient ruins and majestic spires of city towers, there is a horrifying truth, which granite wall separates the novelty from the past games. Dragon Age the Veil Guard is not a role-playing game. Classic game mechanics, which for many years provided recognizability of the series, gave way to the modern trends of the Western game industry. It is no longer possible to predetermine the strategy of behavior of allies or personally take them under your control in the heat of battle. The combat system is maximally simplified in favor of dynamics and spectacularity of what is happening on the screen. The character pumping has been reworked as well, there are three classes in the game, Warrior, Bandit, and Mage. As you pass through the game, specializations, subclasses, become available three pieces for each class. But you will hardly want to pump them, because despite the rather impressive at first glance tree pumping, all active skills, with few exceptions, repeat each other and differ only in the type of animation played. Resistance of some enemies to one or another type of damage does not save the situation. For more than 40 hours of play on a high difficulty level, I never needed to use anything but the initial skills. Sorry, Hawk, but we've lost everything. According to the developer's idea, the system of equipment improvement, known from Dragon Age, Inquisition, was supposed to smooth out the disadvantages of the system. But even here hired by Quota's specialists showed their talent. In the game, there is practically no possibility to transfer equipment between characters. You can't enchant heavy armor and give it to an ally, when in the process of wandering, found a better option. All equipment is strictly divided by factions and most of it, if you don't take into account rewards for quests and hidden chests on locations, is obtained for personal reputation from faction NPCs, like in some old MMORPG. Why it was necessary to do so in a single-player project is completely incomprehensible. The mechanics of hunting and creating equipment is also a thing of the past. No more epic battles with dragons, giants, or other creatures of the world of Tatus to extract valuable resources. The player will have to be content with solving casual puzzles in desert locations and rewards prepared in advance by the developers. Fans of Genshin Impact will appreciate the innovations. Sarcasm. I have a feeling that the people responsible for the development of Dragon Age the Veil Guard know nothing about RPGs and have spent most of their lives playing casual romps on their smartphones. I can't explain such a total simplification of the RPG genre's fundamental game mechanics. Most of the flaws could have been forgiven if the game would have surprised with an exciting story, elaborate quests, and interesting characters. And putting my hand on my heart, I can sincerely assure you that sometimes the spirit of the old Bioware seeps through the platinum of tolerance and rainbow nonsense. What's worth it is the side quest with the search for the missing tavern owner. But that's not enough, because the immersion into the world of the game during the narrative is constantly broken by silly dialogue and contemplation of the appearance of the local heroes. Don't get me wrong, I'm not a racist, and I even like that weird guy from Africa that in his free time from saving the world likes to try on silicone elf ears and make crafts out of wood. However, I will never believe that the legendary Order of the Grey Guardians, consisting mostly of battle-hardened warriors, is recruiting cute wretches into its ranks, and that a club of Tea Party friends can stop the impending evil. I'm old, bearded and still remember the lore of previous games, as do millions of gamers around the world. 
The game's stylistics aren't exactly stellar either. Perhaps all the artist's efforts were spent on creating beautiful locations, but the design of screensavers, enemies, armor, and some characters leaves much to be desired. Just look at what those tolerant monsters did to Morrigan. It's simply painful to watch. Even on the first trailers, it was obvious that players will be waiting for a rainbow team to save the world. But who would have thought that in a series of games where allies were one of the fundamental components of gameplay in Dragon Age, the Veil Guard would turn out to be nothing more than flickering on the screen immortal bags for transferring spells and skills. If the developers allow the player to use a little more active abilities in battle, allies will not be needed at all. Digging into their intertwined mental problems, earning psychological trauma, there is no desire. Their personal stories are banal and boring. Another ally taken by a demon, another maiden regretting the past, another strong and independent but fragile inside. Archetypes are good, but I'd like something new in 10 years of waiting. Perhaps I'm missing something. And some of you, dear readers, will want to try on the role of therapist. But I personally pass. I've had enough personal insults from Ta'ash that I'll never have a conversation with her again. To summarize, as an old fan, it pains me to realize what my once-beloved RPG series has become. Dragon Age. The Veil Guard simply does not have the right to have the subtitle Dragon Age. As the content looks more like an amateur creation of young girls on a themed website than a full-fledged part of the series, which is understood and loved. Bypass this misunderstanding. See you around.